The global economy's getting hit from all angles and there's nowhere left to hide. According to former US Treasury Secretary, this is the moment where there should be increased anxiety. I'm Biko Konstantinos and that's what we're gonna talk about today. If you're passionate like a flamenco guitar player, give this video a like. And if you love puppy dogs, consider subscribing to my channel. You definitely, absolutely won't regret it. Now let's see why the simultaneous shocks to the global economy could be a cause for real worry. I'm gonna look at this article from livemint.com titled World Economy Royal by Simultaneous Shocks Echoing 2007 Anxiety. The world economy is showing signs of a rapid downshift as it contends with a series of shocks. This is increasing the likelihood of another global recession and the danger of major financial disruptions. We're living through a period of elevated risk, said former US Treasury Secretary Lawrence Summers. In the same way that people became anxious in August of 2007 before the global financial crisis, Summers thinks this is the moment when there should be increased anxiety. At the heart of it all, the fallout from the most aggressive interest rate hikes since the 1980s. Basically, the Fed failed to foresee the surge of inflation and now they're trying to catch up by aggressively raising rates. To see just how bad the Fed got it, check out this graphic. Quantitative easing won't cause inflation? Some inflation, but only transitory. Okay, high inflation, but we're peaking. Okay, inflation may not be transitory, but job market and wage growth are very strong. Need to hike aggressively to curb inflation, but no worries, economy very strong and soft landing possible. Negative growth in quarter one, but no recession risk. Okay, recession coming, but you're not going to lose your home. And here's the last two for your enjoyment. We're starting to see more evidence of the impact from these surging interest rate hikes. Nike reported a surging stockpile of unsold products. FedEx gave a warning on delivery volumes. South Korea saw the first drop in semiconductor output in four years. And Apple is backing off plans to boost output of its new iPhones. But looking even more broader, the stock market is tanking. And for more information, check out this video. And now the housing market's starting to roll over. So we've already seen massive impact, but we've still got more rate rises to come. And we're only at the very early stages of the Fed's quantitative tightening process program where they aim to shrink their bond portfolio which saw massive increases due to the quantitative easing program deployed during COVID. We've got the Russian invasion of Ukraine which has very large impact in and of itself but even more than that it has the potential to create an entire new world order. We've got Russia and China leading the way to get away from the US dollar as the reserve currency of the world and there's an informal BRICS nations alliance which might be attempting to create an alternative reserve currency. We've got the recent sabotage of the Nord Stream gas pipeline, which Putin is blaming US and its allies for being responsible. And we've seen Putin announce the annexation of four regions of Ukraine to basically become part of Russia. And the implications are very severe because if any of those four regions were now attacked, Putin would view that as an attack on Russia and could then respond with any force necessary, including nuclear weapons. And based on what Putin said in his recent speech to his nation, there doesn't seem to be any near-term end to this conflict. And it actually looks to be intensifying. We saw a one-week mini shock in the UK, which shows how investors are in the mood to punish policymakers pursuing approaches that are deemed unsustainable. The Bank of England was forced to intervene in its bond market after the new UK government announced 45 billion of unfunded tax cuts. So intervening in the bond market is a form of quantitative easing, which is the opposite of the world's push to curb inflation by increasing interest rates and quantitative tightening. So even though this might be a short-term thing in the UK, it caused some turmoil and you can really see the difficulty now in trying to curb inflation while also ensuring that the economy stays strong. The ultra-high US dollar is also having an impact. 
And this is creating massive issues for developing nations that have issued debt in the US country, such as Sri Lanka, Pakistan and Argentina, who are turning to the International Monetary Fund for help. But it's also affecting large companies like Nike, who downgraded their outlook partly due to foreign exchange effects. All countries saw their national debt rise exponentially due to all the stimulus and money printing they did during COVID. Check out the surging borrowing costs for the UK. Large levels of debt, soaring borrowing costs can only increase the chances of an economic shock, liquidity problems, or other financial ramifications. According to the article, there's many current similarities to the global financial crisis, which ended up being the worst financial crisis since the Great Depression. Rising anxiety across the globe can be seen by this Merrill Lynch market risk indicator. Current levels here are the highest they've been since the COVID absolute panic. You can see how the risk indicator really bottomed out when everything was booming, all assets were rising due to ultra loose monetary policies. But this here is when reality started kicking in and more and more people started to realize things were not so rosy and there were big risks in the overall market. So where does all this leave us? We've got super high inflation with the eurozone now over 10% and correspondingly interest rates surging to try and curb that inflation. We've got some huge geopolitical risks with Russia and potential alliances versus the rest of the West. We've got huge national debts with exponentially rising borrowing costs. We've got currency distortions with the US dollar going nuts against every other currency. Add to all of this and we've got the stock market literally looking like it's about to fall off a cliff with all the crazy gains made above the pre-COVID levels now having disappeared and the likelihood of further declines is increasing every day. I feel like it's only the housing market that's yet to really fall and if that market starts to really fall, there's going to be huge ramifications around the globe as the every everything bubble then becomes the everything crash. There's early signs that housing is starting to fall over, but the next 6 to 12 months will be the real test because if everything crashes at the same time, we could be in for a huge economic shock. Imagine you're under attack and you've got five missiles coming at you from all different directions. You've got some anti-missile guns that you're shooting to try and stop them and you might have some success over here and over here, but then you've got more missiles coming at you from the other directions. That's sort of like how I see the global economy right now. Yes, we might be able to curb inflation, but on the other hand, we might tank the economy. So it's a very difficult road to navigate for policymakers. And one thing's for sure, it's going to be a bumpy ride. I'm Biko Constantinos. <laughs>